How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about how consuming one teaspoon of sugar is really equivalent to reducing your life by about 9 minutes. Since this is a finance channel, you might wonder why this is related to money at all. Well, time is worth a lot of money and if you reduce your life, you're reducing the amount of money that you can make. And disease actually costs a lot of money in the medical bills and also the medication that you have to take. Now I don't want to go through every little detail of how I came out with 9 minutes for every teaspoon. But basically, if you get diabetes, you reduce your lifespan by 8.5 years. The average life expectancy is about 79 years in the United States. If you reduce your lifetime by 8.5 years, you're going to end up living only 70 years. Now in 2008, the average American consumes about 19 teaspoons of sugar every single day. This is equivalent to about 2.5 cans of soda. But you'll know that a lot of people actually consume a lot more than this, maybe like a big gulp or something like that. So here's the math, you calculate the total amount of sugar you have in these 70 years, and then you calculate how many minutes is in that eight and a half years. You divide the two and you see that every teaspoon roughly costs you about nine minutes of life. This is very interesting to me because in comparison to cigarettes, they estimate about seven minutes per cigarette smoked. I know this is kind of hand waving, but it reflects the average very well. If you have twice as much sugar as this, you're probably going to die a lot sooner. However, maybe if you have just half this amount of sugar, you might live to be a lot longer. It's just not a linear correlation, but you can see that on average, this is kind of true. This is based on the assumption that if you consume the average amount, you are going to get diabetes. But this is a pretty safe assumption to me because I see that most of the population is actually obese and kind of on the verge of getting diabetes anyway. So now you know even having the average amount of sugar is really bad for you. But now let me show you if I go to a store, what kind of perspective I have when I look at all the items that they actually sell. Just recently, I go to the big box retail stores and I see a lot of people with their shopping carts and they're just buying whatever inside their shopping carts. It's very telling because I can see people walk by and there are a lot of unhealthy things inside their shopping carts, but it's not like I'm going to go up to them and you know tell them all about this video and tell them everything I'm telling you guys now. For the most part, whenever I look at the contents of the shopping cart, 90% of the stuff in it is something I personally won't buy. So I got to thinking, hey, maybe I know something about all these products that other people don't know. Maybe I need to share it. So that's why I'm making this video. Nothing against obese people and I'm not putting them down or anything. It's just sad that our food system is so poisoned that if you consume like the average person, yeah, you're going to put on some extra pounds. I think it's more about the average person going in and they don't really do the research and they don't know that these products are really that bad for them. And you see in these stores, they even have these motorized shopping carts so you can just sit on the chair in case you can't walk around too well so you can still buy stuff in these motorized chairs. Kind of like those fat chairs in Wally. -E. Anyway, let me go through some common items that I see in people's shopping carts and kind of offer you a perspective on what I see whenever I look at these items and why I don't buy them. Bakery items like the ones in the supermarket is often filled with cakes, croissants, pies, they're all filled with sugar. It's just something I can't even have. Even if I have a little bit of it, I don't feel very well because of the sugar content. Of course you have the candy, so whole aisle that's filled with candies, well you need to have this sparingly. Sodas may or may not be obvious, but fruit juices may be less obvious because when you have fruit juices, you're not having the fiber that goes with it such as orange juice. So having fruit juice is just as bad as having soda because the sugar is still there rather than you having a fruit and it's slowly releasing into your body. The dry cracker aisles with the cookies and donuts, things like that, well those are all filled with sugar as well. So I hardly ever buy them. Cereal, you might think it does not have that much sugar, but for example, Honey Nut cereal has two teaspoons of sugar every three quarter cup. I have more like one and a half cup, so it's really four teaspoons. And whenever I have the cereal, I'm actually having the non-sweetened cereal, and then I mix a little bit of the sweetened cereal in there, just like a tablespoon or two of it in there just to make it a tiny bit sweet. You have the chips, which is really salty, which could give you hypertension, another type of disease, and it's also very fat. The Flaming Hot Chips, I definitely like, but I've since not eaten them, mainly because of the artificial flavors. In one tablespoon of bottled ketchup, you actually have half a teaspoon of sugar. You may not realize that, yeah, there is sugar in basically every processed food that you ever buy. That's why when you go in the store, you just think it's okay to buy. You think it's food, but it's not food. It's all with sugar in it. So the rest of these things may not deal with sugar, but I'm going to go over them anyway. 
frozen pizza in the cheese that they add there's wood pulp in it it's high salt in the meat that they use there's sugar in the dough frozen taco and burritos there's lard and really high in salt as well rotisserie chicken is really high in salt as well so even the costco chicken i notice it's quite high in salt yes it saves you money to buy it but then if you have it too much it's too salty so i would try to eat a little bit of that and make it go with a lot of other grains and vegetables and then that will even out the salt content canned soup is super duper salty to me i don't know how anybody was able to drink that stuff i used to drink it a lot more but not anymore hot dogs have a bunch of preservatives in it and i've noticed it's red meat and it has a lot of salt vitamins i stopped buying them you see people with jars and jars of that I don't buy them anymore because I get my vitamins through eating fruits and vegetables nowadays. Toilet paper, paper towels, tissue, trash bag, disposable plates, forks, knives, bottled water. These are all part of kind of things that would fill the landfill. So if you're into this zero waste movement, it's actually very good for your pocketbook if you're able to avoid these things. I personally have not been able to avoid everything. I still buy toilet paper, paper towels but i realize the need to go there so i'm making a little effort each day kind of like testing things out and seeing what alternatives there are for example paper towels maybe i'll use napkins in the future and you know i might just do that kind of like saran wrap that i put on stuff i don't put saran wrap on things as much these days i just put a plate over it instead that works just as well so after i name all these you might just be thinking oh my gosh beat the bush you're just named everything in the store what can i buy now well you can still buy all the fresh stuff around the perimeter of the supermarket such as the fruits vegetables some meats although you should avoid most of the red meats these days and of course if you eat seafood with low mercury content the smaller types of fish is actually best for you if you ever start trying to do this and just don't eat all the packaged goods you might realize that a lot of medical issues that you used to have might just magically disappear i'm not a doctor so you can't go oh just do this and all my problems will be solved but i am saying that you might realize that suddenly your body behaves differently and it's behaving more in a much healthier manner. So I hope this calculation of one teaspoon of sugar costing you nine minutes of your life really put some perspective on how much it actually costs you to have that sugar. Don't forget to give me a like on this video, comment down below. Let me know what you think of one teaspoon of sugar actually costing you nine minutes of your life. If you're interested in supporting this channel, I have an audible link down in the video description below. And I also have a Patreon over here and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.